Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Azucena Monroy. I'm the data lead of the Linkage Program, and I'll be the panelist of today's webinar. Today's webinar um, is entitled CMS Data Overview and Link Data Products. is our first webinar, and we're excited to launch the series. Um, I'm inviting everyone to join our next uh, webinar, which is going to be on June 12th from 11 a.m. to 12 Pacific time is by one of our studies, UAS, using Understanding American study, uh, America study. And the next one will be June 26th by Acumen on limitations of Medicare data, Medicaid data uh, on June 26th from 10 to 11 a.m. The agenda we have for today is to provide you with an overview of the NIA linkage program, the CMS data that's available through the program, the value of linking CMS data with NIA studies, the link NIA study data, an overview on the, of the enclave and how to gain access to this link data. We'll end with questions and answers. The objectives of the session today are to understand what is offered through NIA's data linkage program and the value add of these services to secondary research, to identify the CMS data available and how it is linked to the NIA studies, and to review the process for accessing and using the CMS data of the NIA study cohorts. We begin today with an overview of the NIA data linkage program. The purpose of the NIA data linkage program is threefold. First, to provide research ready Medicare and Medicaid data files for NIA studies, to streamline access to Medicare and Medicaid data for researchers who are focused on aging research using NIA studies and last to provide secure research tools on a secure remote access enclave for data analysis. In 2021, the National Institute on Aging, NIA, established the NIA's data linkage program. Through a recent information exchange agreement between CMS and the NIA, researchers can gain access to NIA longitudinal cohort studies linked to CMS data to support your research at no cost. Specifically, the NIA linkage program provides three prim primary services. To provide CMS data linkage services for studies and researchers, a secure cloud-based enclave for researchers to conduct their analyses, and to provide technical assistance in helping researchers gain access to CMS data. This is a good point to um, differentiate between studies and researchers. A study refers to a research that is funded by NIA grant or contract, current or past, a research that involves a longitudinal cohort registries uh, that are focused uh, on surveys. And these studies are willing to collaborate with Linkage to link their data participants to CMS administrative and claims data through a data use agreement, also known as a DUA. You'll hear the term throughout the presentation. And these studies are willing to share the linked data with approved researchers to bring about new knowledge regarding healthy aging. Researchers are, uh, who are eligible to use the NIA linkage program data and resources include policy, government, genomic, and academic researchers interested in or currently conducting longitudinal cohort studies related to improving in the clinical, <clears throat> behavioral, social, or economic circumstances affiliated with healthy aging. As researchers, we understand that data drives discovery. Uh, however, obtaining various data from the CMS to enhance research is time consuming and costly. And using the data requires a secure environment, making making it out of reach for many health and aging researchers. Since the 2021 start of the NIA, uh, 
the NIA data linkage program to address these very challenges, researchers can now access to significant linked data sets when studying the health and characteristics of the aging population. <clears throat> so how do we help researchers use these existing data sets? The NIA studies provide critical data needed to answer a large body of research questions relevant to improving the clinical, behavioral, social, and economic circumstances affiliated with healthy aging. This data is housed on our linkage enclave. The linkage enclave complies with over 450 Federal Information Security Modernization Act of 2014, or FISMA, safeguards that help secure your sensitive analytical work requiring you to build FISMA compliance systems, undergo annual federal security audits, and obtain federal agency certifications on your own. Because Linkage has already provided the full array of services to link CMS data to survey and registry data and produce research files that are tailored for NIH style studies, the data sets are readily available for researchers to access to conduct secondary analysis. We also provide knowledgeable support in many areas such as data, enclave, and DUA processes. NIA has funded many longitudinal studies throughout the years, producing top-notch and informative information from survey data, clinical trials, even genomic studies. By linking that data with comprehensive provider-based healthcare claims and CMS administrative assessment and prescription drug data creates very powerful and rich healthcare data that enhances the value and utility of the data with additional knowledge of health outcomes, healthcare utilization, and expenditures. The linkage program links study participants to CMS beneficiaries and then produces CMS data for that cohort. Linkage interacts extensively with the study researchers to produce user-friendly data sets that synthesize raw claims and medical records into meaningful indicators of health conditions and treatments relevant for clinical, behavioral, social, and economic research on aging. Using this file saves analysts considerable time and effort in learning about the intricacies of CMS data. Additionally, using these files ensures uniformity and high quality in data set construction, permitting replication of study findings. Today, the NIA uh, linkage program has more than 50 participating NIA studies, such as the Health and Retirement Study, known as HRS, the National Health and Aging Trends, known as NHATS, and the National Alzheimer's Coordinating Center, or NAC. There have been over 100 research publications from researchers who have conducted secondary research on the CMS-linked NIA studies. Some examples include functional trajectories at the end of life for individuals with dementia, genetic and regulatory architecture of Alzheimer's disease in the APOE region, and the genetic heterogeneity of Alzheimer's disease in subjects with and without hypertension. There are 16 CMS data files that are available through the NIA's data linkage program, and we will be uh, talking about these type uh, data types in the next few, few slides. So we have Medicare uh, fee-for-service claims, uh, parts A and B. We have Medicare Advantage Encounters, known as Part C. We have Medicare Drug File, uh, Drug Event File, PDE, or Part D. We have three types of assessment data. We have OASIS, which is the, the Home Health Outcome and Assessment Information Set. We have ERFI, the Inpatient Rehabilitation Facility Patient Assessment Instrument. And we have MDS, Long-Term Care Minimum Data Set. We also have Medicaid uh, claims data. We have MTM, the Medicare therapy management file, and we have uh, the master beneficiary summary files or MBSF, the base segment, the chronic conditions, the other, condition, uh, other chronic conditions or potentially disabling conditions, 
and the cost and utilization files. Now that we have an overview of the program, let's dive into the CMS data that is available through the NIA data linkage program. <laughs> There is more detailed information in the next few slides. Um, this slide presents an overview of the different types of data available. Uh, we have added some asterisks um, to the node uh, files or data types that complement each other or su succeed each other. Um, and we'll, we'll have more details in the next slides. The program has comprehensive data available. Um, we have raw CMS uh, claims data. Um, these data sets are longitudinal, uh, which fully track beneficiaries across time. The file layout has been aligned to allow streamlined programming, and the granular healthcare service details allow for robust analyses. <clears throat> As a researcher, you would have access to the NIA study link data sets as set forth in your DUA or uh, data use agreement uh, with your NIA study. The data files in the next three slides are all available annually. These slides have the name of the file, the contents and the years of data available. I will give you a more detailed description of at least one of the files, the first one on each of the slides. Let's take a look here at the, sorry, I had to, um, okay. Uh, let's look at the denominator and the master beneficiary summary or MBSF uh, base segment file. <clears throat> the denominator file contains demographic enrollment and entitlement data for um, prior to 1999. So from 91 to 98. <clears throat> and then um, this file is replaced by the MBSF base segment file that is available from 99 to 2023. <clears throat> um, and this, this file can be also requested quarterly. Demographic data include age, beneficiary identification number, date of birth, date of death, gender, race, residency, residence, county, state, and zip code. <clears throat> um, we also have uh, monthly enrollment counts for parts A, B, and both. We have monthly managed care indicator, resource for entitlement, uh, which is basically being age 65 and older or disability, and if there's any state buying indicators. <clears throat> so the other MBSF uh, files that we have are the chronic conditions. This uh, file contains um, indicators of whether the participants have one or more of the 27 chronic conditions. Um, the file is available from 99 to 22, and in 2020, three conditions were added, so now we have 30. The cost and utilization file is available, uh, again, from 99 to 22, and it contains calculated payments for and aggregated services rendered to the participants. And the other chronic conditions or potentially disabling conditions um, contain other 35 chronic conditions uh, related to the patients, and those conditions include mental health, tobacco, alcohol, and drug use, developmental disorders, disability-related conditions, behavioral health, and other chronic physical conditions. So the Medicare provider analysis and review or MedPAR file organizes health service data from two part A settings, inpatient and skilled nursing facility. In two states, and the states refer to the time between the beneficiary's admission to a hospital 
or skilled nursing facility and the beneficiaries discharge for Medicare certified inpatient hospitals and skilled nursing facilities. Report card sponsors can use this data to calculate measures relating to hospital quality, conditions, and procedures. There are some differences between um, inpatient, the inpatient file coming from part A, which we'll review um, in a little bit, and the med part. Uh, they both contain inpatient uh, information, but the inpatient file from part A contains detailed revenue center codes that record which areas within a hospital the patient received care. It also has information about the attending physician, which is not available in the med part. However, the inpatient claims uh, file is not as easy to analyze as the fixed format MedPAR files and may require more programming. MedPAR has both um, SNF and inpatient. <clears throat> we also have the Medicaid uh, data from 99 to 2015. Um, we have the MAX or Medicaid analytic extract available. Um, it's a health services information uh, with diagnosis, drugs, and procedures uh, for the Medicaid um, uh, and release. And that file was replaced starting in 2014 by TMSS, which is the Transform Medicaid Statistical Information System. And it's available uh, until 2021. <clears throat> For parts A and B, um, we have inpatient, um, outpatient, SNF, health, uh, uh, home health, hospice, DME, and carrier. And we have it available from 91 to 2023. Um, information include diagnosis, drugs, procedures um, for the participants. Sorry, one more, Medicare C, uh, Part C, Medicare Advantage. Um, it's for individuals that are enrolled in Medicare Advantage and uh, which are paid through private health insurance companies. We have similar uh, data files as uh, Medicare's Part A and B. We have um, IP, so inpatient, outpatient, um, SNF, home health carrier and the ME, and it's available from 2015 to 2021. <clears throat> so um, for the two files that we have for Part D, the first one is PDE, Part D event files. Um, they have data on prescription drug fields for individuals enrolled in Medicare Part D, either through a prescription drug plan uh, PDP, or a Medicare Advantage pres Prescription Drug Plan, MAPD. The PDE file has information on beneficiary demographics, drug codes, day supply, quantity dispense, pharmacy identifiers, and service dates and costs. PDE files span the years uh, 2006 through 2023. <clears throat> the MTM files the Part D medication therapy management um, is available from 2013 to 21 and have the following data on medication therapies for participants enrolled in the CMS Part D MTM program. Beneficiary demographics, drug recommendations, drug reviews, enrollment dates, plan enrollment, and provider characteristics. Eligible beneficiaries include those enrolled in Part D plans with multiple chronic diseases, those taking multiple Part D drugs, and those likely to have expenditures exceeding a specified threshold. In terms of assessment, we have, like I mentioned before, uh, three types. We have OASIS, um, which is for individuals receiving home health um, care. It's available from 99 to 21. We have EarthPy um, for uh, beneficiaries in, in patient rehabilitation facilities and is available from 2002 to 21. And we have MDS, um, which is for beneficiaries receiving long-term care services and is available from 99 to 2023. 
And the last data type we have is HEDIS. Um, it has comprehensive set of standardized performance measures designed to provide reliable comparison of health plan performance. It's available from 2015 to 18 and 2020. Like I mentioned, uh, the all data types are, are available annually. Um, for COVID research, um, MBS, uh, PDE, MBSF, BASE, and Medicare Parts A and B can be available monthly um, or quarterly if this, the, the study decides to um, have it quarterly but it could be as often as monthly. Now let's take a look at the value of linking CMS data with NIA study data and how it benefits other researchers. <clears throat> the utility of using this CMS link data in secondary analysis in health and aging research is vast. The opportunities to impact policy, standards of care, and even affect systemic changes are now within reach. There is a wide variety of research available on secondary analysis and new ways of looking at existing data. <clears throat> Some examples of research that have taken advantage of NIA studies through sec secondary research projects include research on genomics, dementia and Alzheimer's, frailty, hypertension, identification of older adults with serious illness, health economics, social determinants of health, depression, hip fractures. I invite you to think for a moment about your research and search through the current NIA studies available to find out whether the linkage program can support your research. <clears throat> Let's look at one example that has published, that was published by the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation in the Department of HHS in 2020. The title is Functional Trajectories at the End of Life for Individuals with Dementia Final Report. The study um, was HRS, the Health and Retirement Study. The problem addressed was that dementia is a leading cause of death. Dementia is particularly prevent, uh, prevalent at the end of life in older adults, and that there's limited knowledge regarding the patterns of decline for adults with dementia who may also have comorbid terminal conditions. <clears throat> After conducting secondary analysis, the research found that people with dementia have significantly higher levels of functional impairments than those without dementia up until the last year of life. Functional impairment of people with dementia at two to four years before death may look similar to people without dementia in the last six to 12 months of life. The policy implications, um, this study helps providers, patients, and families determine when to access palliative services to improve and complement end-of-life care. Let's take a look at examples of our many NIA studies that are linked to CMS data. <clears throat> Let's start with HRS. Uh, this study started in 1992. It's a longitudinal panel study that explores the changes of labor force participation and the health transitions that individuals undergo toward the end of their work lives and in the years that follow. They start uh, the study at age 50. Another example is Health ABC is an interdisciplinary study focused on risk factors for the decline of function in healthier older persons, particularly change in body composition with age. Mm -hmm. 
LLFS is an international collaborative study of the genetics and familial components of exceptional survival, longe longevity, and healthy aging. NHATS fosters research to guide efforts to reduce disability, maximize health, and independent functioning, and enhance quality of life at older age. NLTCS, a longitudinal survey designed to study changes in the health and functional status of older Americans. It also tracks health expenditures, Medicare service use, and more. PSID is the longest running longitudinal household survey that measures economic and social well-being and has allowed researchers and policy analysts to investigate the dynamism inherent in social and behavioral processes. Okay, let's take a look at the enclave, which is the secure space where uh, the data sets and your analysis will be conducted. Through the LinkFetch platform, you'll have access to data through the NIA Secure website portal, a personalized virtual desktop that meets over 400 federal security requirements. Within that virtual desktop, researchers have access to linked and ready to use data sets, support resources to help you through the process of accessing your data, and a suite of analytic and office apps. From your virtual desktop, you will be able to access the various applications available on Linkage. The statistical applications include Python, SAS, R, and Stata, while the Office applications available are Adobe PDF, Microsoft Word and Excel, and Notepad++. As a researcher, how would you gain access to the CMS-linked NIA study on the Enclave? Your compliance officer will create that researcher's user account. Then the researcher completes the account registration by passing remote identity proofing through Experian. Register a multi-factor authentication through Duo and agree to the linkage security policy. <clears throat> Then you have access to the NIA Linkage Enclaves virtual, virtual desktop where you have the software we discussed and where there is a data directory that has a CMS data folder, which is populated with the NIA's data linkage team um, that has been populated with, um, with your data and a study data folder, which is populated by the, the study team that was selected to conduct the secondary analysis on. So you, you will have two um, spaces, one for the CMS data sets and one for this data, uh, the, the study data. So let's take a look. And I think my, okay. Um, so this is how it um, a process uh, typically works uh, for us to link and share um, a study data. We start <clears throat> with one um, NIA sponsored um, study. Um, the study uploads their study data to the linkage desktop. Based on their finder file, uh, they submit. Uh, for us to match the participants to the CMS administrative data, um, the, the data linkage uh, team produces the linkage, which is basically matching the study participants to the uh, CMS beneficiaries. And we also produce the selected CMS linked data sets. Based on your DUA approved data, our team produces and uploads your CMS data sets uh, which are basically a subset of the study's linked data. With the study data and the CMS linked data, then you'll be ready to conduct your analysis on the enclave. 
finally, we'll look at how you as a researcher can gain access to CMS linked data. Um, yeah. <clears throat> So how do you obtain uh, CMS link data? Let's take a look at, this is uh, basically a summary of four steps. Um, and we're here to support you uh, at any time of this process. So there are basically four steps. The first, um, our research must obtain a DUA from the study. Their DUA will typically require that you stipulate and justify which data you need uh, from them. The next step is obtaining a DUA from the NIA, which requires the approval from the study, an institutional review board approval letter, a data request form where the researcher stipulates and justifies which data is being requested, and a project information form with an abstract disclosure agreement and research plan. This DUA authorizes access to, and if, if applicable, use of sensitive CMS linked data sets. You then complete the project services agreement, which specifies the person responsible for members' use of linkage and outlines the rules of behavior for using the enclave. <clears throat> the last step is to receive uh, when you receive a credential email and configure your, your account, um, you will have to go through the remote identity proofing and the UA multi-factor authentication that we mentioned before. You set up your workspace and add the users that you will authorize to access the data. And then you will be able to access the authorized data on the enclave. You're welcome to call or email us uh, to obtain more information, um, and we will support you throughout this process. And I think this is the end of the presentation. Uh, you're welcome to uh, submit your questions. I will leave this page here where you can find our email our phone number, our hours of operation, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. And I'm happy to um, take any questions from you.